The previous big lab about lands was such a hit, I've made one for the end of this part about subnetting. It's lots of subnetting exercises built into a scenario, and then at the end, if you want to give it a try, you can implement it in Packet Tracer. Let me set it up for you, and then you can dive in and enjoy. So this content matches part four of the official CERT guide, volume one. Now, I marked chapter 15 because in the current edition, it's the last chapter, but you really need all the chapters, the knowledge and the skills from all those to proceed with this exercise because it touches on all of those. So in that part, there's a chapter that begins that gives you a little bit about all aspects of subnetting from a big picture perspective. And then it has four chapters that drills down on individual tasks in there. And you won't use all of those processes and procedures, but you'll use several of them and it'll put it in a big scenario for you. What's the scenario? I give you this topology diagram. I'll give you more details about it here in this video. And you'll start out by calculating the lowest and highest subnet IDs. I'll give you some network IDs and masks to work with. And then you're going to figure out where in this topology do you need to use subnets. You'll pick specific subnet IDs. You'll calculate the ranges of usable addresses in each subnet. You'll pick specific IP addresses to use in those LANs and in those WANs. Then you'll create sample configurations in a text editor so you can go implement those addresses in your switches and your routers. And if you're up for it, as a bonus, I'll give you a Cisco Packet Tracer file and you can go configure those settings in the devices. All right, sound like fun? All right, let me give you the details and then you can go off and do the exercise. First, let's look more closely at the topology. These three routers on the right are meant to be branch office routers. Each is connected to a single LAN switch, and those LAN switches have a single VLAN configured in them. All right, so that's, that should inform you a little bit about what to do with your subnetting plan. Each of them has one PC, and those are theirs, so that if you do implement this in Cisco Packet Tracer, you'll have some PCs to do ping and trace route commands from. We've got three Ethernet WAN links that connect back to one central site router, R10. R10 connects to two LAN switches, each of which has one VLAN configured in them with a PC off there, again, to issue ping and trace route commands with. The routers, of course, have interface IDs. Here are the interface IDs that you can use when you get around to doing your configuration in an editor and then if you implement it in Cisco Packet Tracer. So those are there for your reference. By the way, I've written this exercise up also as a blog post. It's linked in the show description here. If you'd like to click that and you can see figures like this statically, it might be helpful as you're working through the lab. Additionally, here are the locations for the subnets. Remember how I said each LAN switch has a single VLAN, so we'll need two subnets on the far left for those two LANs, three on the far right for each of the branch office LANs, and three for the WAN links in the middle. And I've pre-labeled them with generic names, subnet 11, subnet 12, and so on, because in the instructions, I'm going to tell you some rules so that you will pick the same subnet IDs for these eight subnets that I pick so it's easier to work through the exercise and compare my answers to your answers. Now let's go through the exercise. Task number one is find all subnets of three different networks. Now, why am I using three different networks? To give you more to do in the exercise. If I was just doing this for the sake of, say, practicing configuration, I'd probably just use one network. So for each of these three networks, go ahead and find the numerically lowest three subnet IDs, the numerically highest three subnet IDs for practice, all right? The three networks and masks to use are network 10 with a slash 20 mask, this network with a slash 30, this network with a slash 23. So we've got a class A, a class C, and a class B. So once you have that built as reference, then we'll talk about where to use those. So what I want you to do is look at that generic planning diagram, and I'll show you that on the next slide where it says subnet 11 and 12, and pick the numerically lowest two subnets of network 10 from the list you just created. Then for subnets 21, 22, 23, pick the numerically highest three subnets from network 192, 168, 9. And then for subnets 31 through 33, pick the numerically lowest three subnets from network 172, 20. 
All right. So just to remind you of those locations, subnet 11 and 12 in the far left, 21, 22, 23 in the middle, 31, 32, 33. So once you make your list of all possible subnet IDs, I'm telling you to pick eight specific ones per that set of rules to use here. Now, if you end up picking eight different ones versus my instructions, it's okay. But that's what I'm going to show in the answers, all right? Next up, plan specific addresses from within those subnets. So the next thing you're going to need to do is a math exercise to find what are the addresses in those subnets. And once you know that generic information, I want you to look at each subnet, like say this subnet up here with PC11, Switch11, and Router R10's top interface. And I'm telling you, I want you to pick the numerically lowest IP address for the PC. And I want you to use the highest address for the router interface and the second highest address for the switch. All right, so those are the addresses I want you to use in each LAN. So that's the pattern to use in each LAN. Now, in the LAN, the PCs and switches need a default gateway setting that points to the router in that LAN. So they need those settings. So, for instance, PC11 up here will refer to router 10's GIG01 IP address as its default gateway. Switch 11 will point to router 10's GIG01 IP address as its default gateway. So plan that as well. All right, so that's the plan with LAN. So I'm, I'm imagining a planning table, something like this. Hey, PC11, here's its address and mask. Its gateway is router 10's address. Switch 11, here's its address and mask. It's the second highest number, whereas PC11's was the lowest number in the subnet. And then R1's is the highest number in the subnet. So that covers the approach and convention for LANs, but for WANs, Here's the deal. You've got a link and you've got two addresses. You've got the router on one end of the link and the router on the other end. So the way it's numbered with R1, 2, and 3 on the far right and router R10 on the left, just give R10 a higher IP address in the subnet. And on the right, those routers give them a lower IP address in that subnet when choosing specific IP addresses. And you can write that down to plan those numbers. So those are most of the IP addressing and subnetting intensive topics, then we turn our attention to what would you configure. Now, here's, here's the dilemma I had in making this. I almost didn't make this exercise because <clears throat> notice I say here the best of your current abilities. I, I haven't gotten to the topic where I teach you how to configure router IP addresses yet. But honestly, it, it's a pretty low bar to figure out. Many of you will have seen this already in other places. So I went ahead and offered this to you. So if you get through task four with the, what I'll say, generic subnetting tasks, that's a great exercise. But if you feel like you could configure IP addresses on routers, for instance, you can go ahead and start working on task five. So create configuration in a text editor. You could say create pseudo config for the PCs. Just note what IP address and mask and default gateway you would configure. Create notes about what you would configure for IP addresses, or if you know the exact syntax, create the exact syntax for configuring router IP addresses. Now, we have already configured or already covered in this course how to configure switch IP addresses in default gateways, so you should practice that and review that if you've forgotten how to do it. Do that configuration in VLAN 1 for this exercise. So create those configs in an editor, and then if you really feel like you're up for it, Go ahead and open up the Cisco Packet Tracer file that's linked in the show description and give it a shot. <clears throat> configure the router interface IP addresses, configure the switch IP addresses and default gateway, configure same on the PCs. All right. Note that if you download that Packet Tracer file, it is pre configured with things like OSPF so that if you configure the IP addresses correctly, get this. If you configure the IP addresses correctly on the PCs and switches and routers, then those PCs should be able to ping each other at the end of the lab. All right. I'm much more concerned about you practicing the subnetting math for this exercise, but if you do all those things, the pings should work at the end. If you have trouble, you can leave me a note and I'll see if I can help you troubleshoot the problem. So it's time to do the exercise. So let me recap and give you some reference information. 
Here are the main tasks to do in the exercise. You can pause if you'd like to refer to it. But here's the data you need in the coming slides. Here's a reference page for all the router IDs that you need to look at. Nice and handy here at the end. Hit pause if you want. Otherwise, to find all the subnet IDs of three networks, here's a reminder of those three networks and masks that we want to use for this exercise. Moving on to the next reference page. Here's our subnet plan with the generic names of eight subnets and then the specific rules I want you to use to pick from the list of subnet IDs to pick subnets to use in each case. Then, which IP addresses do you use in each subnets? For Well, for LANs, PC is the lowest, router is the highest, switch is the second highest address, whereas on the WANs, give router 10 the higher address, the others the lower address. That's all the reference information you need. You can go ahead and do the exercise. You should definitely do the exercise for yourself, but click on the left for that video and even bookmark it so you'll be ready to review the exercise once you've done it for yourself. Then don't miss the part review for this part that's linked on the right side of the page. It gives you a plan for how to study here forward to master all your subnetting math. Make sure to check that out. Hope you're enjoying the content. I'll talk to you soon.